Okay, everybody awake? Okay, today we're going to talk about the Acts of the Apostles. And uh, just like last week, except we're going to move on, uh, we're going to be in verses Acts 1, 15 to 25, and a little bit of Acts 2 today. Uh, last week we ended in 14 of Acts 1, where the women were praying with Mary, Jesus' mom, in the same meeting with the brethren. However, the early books of Acts was all for Jewish people only. It was speaking to Jewish people. There's only Jewish people there. Now, I was in the Pentecostal churches most of my life. And they all go to, to Acts 2-4, I think, for their doctrine. And uh, I have many family members that were all brought up in Pentecostal churches and still go to Pentecostal churches and still practice that doctrine, which is not the doctrine of Jesus' Father, as we're going to see in the study. Now, being brought up Pentecostal and having family members who still practice this, they take only the early part of Acts. They never, they never read the whole book of Acts. And, and, and it's like they don't even know it. They only take the early uh, book of Acts, which is only for the Jews. And they try and convince you that it's for us today. And anytime you, you visit these family members of mine, they'll try and convince you it's for us today. But I'm going to show you how to defend yourself with God's word from that so you know the truth, so you're free make you free now the interesting thing that I remember usually it's the congregation is, has more women than men always always in the Pentecostal church there's more women than men there which is okay it's nothing wrong with women going to church nothing wrong with that but they would start to speaking in tongues it would always be the woman that would start to speak in the tongues when I was a boy and I thought that was strange and often it would be without interpretation sometimes it was back then but often it would be without interpretation or the pastor would interpret it and it's just, just unscriptural what they're doing. And you, we'll see that as we go through there. And also there's many, many of these charismatic churches we went to and the pastor was actually a woman. And I don't know why my dad was okay with that because the scripture, we're going to read what the scripture says about that today. Now these women will also, I'll always take you to Acts uh, 1 verse 14. And I'm going to read, we're going to read that together. Let's go to the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts. And we're going to read that together and see why these women take you there to defend themselves. But you know, there's got to be 30 different scriptures that warn a woman not to be up in the front speaking, except if she's teaching women or children. She's not to be up there. So they always go to this one verse. We'll take it to Acts 1.14. So underline it, defend yourself. You know the woman's lying to you. Acts 1.14. Now, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So you see, the, here the women are mentioned first. And then this is what these women will say to you. These women, you see, the women are mentioned first here. So that shows us that we're to be in authority and even in charge of church events. This is the one lame verse. Oh, it's not a lame verse. It's a very good verse when you properly uh, put it in context. But it, they'll take you to one single verse and build their whole doctrine on that. Yeah, I can be a pastor. Yeah, I can be an apostle. Yeah, we have women apostles here in Suriname too, all over the world. So let's look at later on what Paul said for us today in church meetings. When we're in a church meeting, for us Gentiles. <coughs> Paul was the, the, the apostle of the Gentiles, right? For us in 1 Corinthians 14... 34. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. 
this is how a church is supposed to work. A church is, that's what we're having right now. We're sitting down, reading God's word. We have his book open. He's in our presence. We're having church. And this is what all the church buildings in the world are supposed to be doing. That are Gentiles, not Jews. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let your woman keep silence in the churches. For it is not permitted for them to speak. How can a woman be a pastor if it's not permitted for her to speak? But we'll go on because there's times when you should, a woman should be speaking. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. So, said, so Paul says they're to be under obedience for a New Testament church also saith the law. And it's also in the law. But he's talking about now for the New Testament church. Verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Verse 36. What? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? And this is what these women actually claim that are pastors. Oh, I just got a word from the Lord. You always hear them say that. Joyce Myers, all these people. Beth Moore. Oh, I just got a word from the Lord for you guys. The spear was thrust through Jesus' side, showing that he died from a broken heart to heal my broken Absolutely. heart. And we're going to go there. And number seven, Jesus bled on the inside when he was bruised to break every iniquity, which is those repeated sins of your forefathers. That it's, the, it's really learned behavior. It, 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 and he's the first of many brethren, which means I now come into a priestly anointing. So I now can... Say walk, that again, because I they now, don't get it. I now come into a priestly anointing. Jesus is not the only begotten on. son of God. He is not. I'm a son of he's God. He's the first fruit. You, you're the, he's the first fruit. He's the first born of many. Okay. Jesus is not the only begotten on. son of God. He is not. I'm a son of he's God. The, the Bible says we're to come boldly before the throne, the throne of, God. of God. And I can come boldly, not double-minded. I can come. As he became poor that you might become oh, rich. Nice. And that's exactly what God warned us about here. What came the word of God out of you? Or came it unto you only? Now there was woman prophetesses in the Old Testament. Why? Because the men became too effeminate. The men didn't want to defend God anymore. And God put women, in, women to, 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 to be prophetesses. But here, we're in the New Testament. So, so back in the house churches of Corinth, see, see we're reading from Corinthians here, so they had house churches back then, they always met in houses. There was already a problem with the woman claiming that the word of God came from them rather from the scriptures. You see, it was already going on and came from them only. Now, the Seventh-day Adventists, I don't know if you know anything about the Seventh-day Adventists. It says cult, and they have a woman called Ellen G. White, and she claims she had dreams and visions, and that's why the fourth commandment should be that uh, 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 you should only worship on the Sabbath, on a Saturday, on a Saturday. And the Seventh-day Adventist claimed, this is our prophetess. And she spoke in the church. She was the only one that spoke in the church, and everyone learned from this woman. And this would be a New Testament church. This is only 100 years ago. Now, before I go any farther, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say some difficult things today. And I know that we have a lot of people here who are guests and visitors at every service, I can almost guarantee we have friends that are from the Roman Catholic persuasion. I know we have a lot of people here that grew up in the Roman Catholic Church, and I don't want anyone to interpret anything I'm saying as trying to be uh, ungracious or unkind to our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. Our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. <laughs> what did he say? Our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. If you're got a brother and you got a sister, you have the same father. Who's the father of the Catholic Church? Lucifer. They admit it. They admit it with their own mouth. Approximately 100 years ago, I don't know the exact. And that this is why they worship on Saturday because Ellen told them it came from God to her only. You can go back read that verse 36, 1 Corinthians 14, 36. The word of God came out from you or came unto you only? Paul warned us this would happen. And it's all over the place today, the Seventh-day Adventist cult. There's nothing wrong with worshiping Saturday, don't get me wrong. 
Nothing wrong with it all worshiping Saturday. We should be worshiping every day. But they say Sunday worshipers are worshiping the Antichrist, the sun god. And uh, we're, that's one thing we're not to judge for. Which day any one of us chooses to celebrate as a holy day or to worship God or, or to have our church. We can do it any day of the week. It doesn't have to be on a specific day. We're not to judge someone for that. The Seventh-day Adventist right away will judge you if you worship on a Sunday and saying you're Antichrist. So that's, that's clearly a lie. So in the charismatic movement, I personally witnessed all my life, the woman would stand up and start speaking in these vain babblings, blah, 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 blah. Said, I'm gonna shout in the name of Jesus. You be made whole by the power of God. That's it. That's it. That's it. That is a whole new level of breakthrough in your life tonight. I don't even know what they're saying to this day. But I thought it wasn't the language of earth. Because I've been pretty much most places in the world. And I've definitely heard virtually every language in the world. And there's no language that I've ever heard in the world that they're speaking. And no interpretation by a, a second or third party.
They stayed in English, a false translation of their vain, earthly stammerings. I call them stammerings. Actually, God calls them stammerings. And, and we'll go through that maybe later on in the study, not today. Also claiming and came from, to, from God to them only. Yeah, every time they're up there speaking in tongues. I got a word from the Lord. Only I get it. A word from the Lord. Here's the interpretation. Often they interpret themselves, which is unscriptural as well. Now they want their women to be teachers and preachers usurping authority over the men. And what does God say about that? Let's go to the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Let's see if a woman's to do this in the church. 1 Timothy 2. And verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So you're learning, you learn in silence. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So if you have a little, a little uh, uh, kids meeting, or you have a, a woman's group, then the woman can teach the woman. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They're supposed to, the older woman, especially if they're not in the scriptures, they're supposed to teach the younger woman. That's just supposed to teach them when they're not in the church. Verse 13, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. They actually, God took Eve out of Adam's side, one of his ribs. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. That's why a woman is not to speak in church. She's going to think from emotion. Who did the serpent deceive in the garden? Well, the woman, because she reacts and moves based on her emotions, which is exactly what goes on in the charismatic church. It's all emotion, all feelings in those churches. The woman gets saved in her silence, but you know the woman gets saved only conditionally? You better have a spiritual covering, a man in your life, a godly man. Look at verse 15. 1 Timothy 2.15. We're still in 1 Timothy. Let's go to 2.15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If they continue in faith, charity, and holiness with sobriety. That's right. They're not to be out... And, and sobriety doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean just not drinking alcohol. 
It means not being spiritually drunk too. Don't get all emotional and spiritually drunk out there, especially in the church buildings. And we're going to go into that, not today, the spiritual drunkenness, but we're going to talk about that a little later. Now, going back to Acts 1, verse 15. We're, we're in Acts. Listen, we're studying Acts 1, 15. But we had a 15 relates to, it started, it's, it was a different time, a different place, and they're talking about Judas, Judas, because Judas was now dead. They're talking about Judas and how they're going to replace him because he betrayed Jesus. Acts 1, 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. So Peter's in the midst of the disciples and they had about 108 brethren around them. 108 brethren. And verse 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled. Oh, sorry, there was only 11 apostles. There have been 109 brethren because Judas was dead. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been filled, filled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas. David spoke about Judas? Judas wasn't even alive. Which was guide to them that took Jesus. Oh, so these guys that took Jesus, the Sanhedrin, the high priests, and they had the Romans come and take them? They weren't reading their scriptures. Verse 17, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man, now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst. All his bowels gushed out. Now isn't that strange that all Judas's bowels gush, gushed out? Why would his bowels all gush out? His body must have been there for many hours. Before, before Jesus' crucifixion. Because he was hanging on, it was, it was probably a very strong tree he put the rope on and hung himself on a branch of it that was sticking out. Now he must have been completely bloated to burst open or, and have your intestines gush out, or uh, maybe it was just a sharp stony ground under him. I don't know for sure, and it could have been a great height. That tree could have been very tall. I don't know. I've never seen the tree. But we know that when Jesus was crucified, the moment he died, there was a violent earthquake and the earth rent. and ripped open when all the saints, saints come out of the graves. So that could have caused that branch to break off. And it would have been so violent, maybe the ground was shaken under him and hit something sharp. I don't know, but it's, that was kind of strange. Anyway, verse 19. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem insomuch as that field is called in the proper tongue a seldama, which is to say the field of blood. Now Judas was clearly dead here. So there were only 11 of the original disciples present. Let's go, let's go to uh, Acts 120. For it is written in the book, of, remember we talked about David, talking about what Judas was going to do? Let's look at that. Acts 120. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric, let him, let another take. His bishopric, which would be his authority as an, as an, as an apostle, We're talking about Judas. Psalm 69, 25. Let's look at that. Let's look at what David said. This is very interesting. How this just all ties together. It's prophesied Judas' death. Psalm 25. 
what we just read in Acts, we're going to see again in Psalm 69, 25. Is let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell there in their tents. Now this speaks to the Sanhedrin, the chief priest rejecting Jesus back here in Psalms. Or, or in, the, in the future, he's, he's projecting that to the Sanhedrin, chief, rejecting Jesus. Seth will be the judge. The, machi the, the Mashiach will be the judge and not for what he sees and not for what he hears, but what he smells. He believed the Mashiach Ben David is, is coming he's, he's, to, to this temple. Mashiach Ben David is very soon and he is a Jew and it is, he is not Jesus. And uh, if the Christians want to hold it, they can hold it. But we will never change our mind. We prefer to go back to Auschwitz and not to change our religion. You could put this whole book of Psalm 69 you could put it right into Jesus' mouth in the Garden of Gethsemane. Everything Jesus said came out of Psalm 69, pretty much. You can see it all prophesied. And Jesus had to fulfill that prophecy. So, uh, when Jesus went off to pray, yeah. Then in Psalms 41, there's this. Go back to Psalms 41. Let's pray Psalms. Psalms 41. fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 